G'day folks, Nat here from Living Entertainment. I hope you're all doing really well. We've got some new products in from Marantz and we want to tell you all about them. Today, we're going to talk about the Model 30 Integrated Amplifier. So what we're going to do today is listen to two different sources, one being the Marantz SACD30N network player slash SACD CD player, and the other being a clear audio performance DC turntable with the Essence MC or moving coil cartridge attached to it. We're also going to listen to three different speakers, so lots of variants here. The speakers are Wharfdale Evo 4.4 floor standards, the monitor audio Scold 200 floor standards, and lastly is the Bowers and Wilkins 702 S2 floor standing speakers. So lots of variants here. We should get a really good understanding of how this amplifier sounds with different sources and different speakers. Now to throw in even more variables, we actually listen to a bunch of different tracks as well. Some of them we listen to both on the uh, turntable and via streaming, so we could compare them directly. Others we just played the one off. So those tracks were actually uh, Nils Lofgren, Keith Don't Go, Dire Straits, Private Investigations, Pink Floyd, Money, and lastly was Kurt Elling's Night Moves. So plenty of variation there. Now let's start with the ones where we could directly compare the uh, clear audio performance with the SACD30N. And that was Neil Lofgren, Keith Don't Go. Now the differences here were quite subtle. We really couldn't differentiate the tonal difference. It actually basically stayed much the same, which was quite a surprise. Normally there's a bit of a difference when listening to um, digital versus obviously pure analog. So a bit of a testament there to the actual quality of the inbuilt Fano preamplifier in the Model 30. Where I did notice very subtle differences was in the uh, decay in, in that particular song. The bass, because it's mostly just acoustic guitar, we really didn't notice it there. So there's just ever so slight difference in decay. Now moving on to uh, private investigations, uh, where we could completely uh, compare the two once again. We noticed uh, a greater difference here, not so much in the decay so much here, once again, maybe ever so slightly, but the, the bottom end was actually a little bit more prominent on the turntable. As far as detail goes, I would probably give it a slight edge to the SACD30N. Once again, it's, it's so subtle, so a really good uh, comparison there. Moving on to Pink Floyd Money, that was actually a bit of an interesting one. First off, I actually wasn't all that impressed with how it sounded. I actually thought it just sounded a little bit too, too much focus on the mid-range, all the instruments seemed closed in. But after we swapped out one of the speakers, the Evo 4.4s, for the Bowers and Wilkins 602 S2s, uh, everything cleared up. So clearly it wasn't the source there, and it obviously wasn't the amplifier either. It was just the combination of, of particular products wasn't quite working. So once we did put those 702s in there, it was uh, beautifully articulated, and you got all that detail that you would expect from an SACD. And um, we can certainly um, double down that when we put it on the Scold 200s. It was much of the, the same sort of information there, albeit slightly more laid back. Lastly was Kurt Elling's Night Moves. Now this is a really laid back uh, tune. There's not a lot going in it, but it is very well produced. So it does allow a lot of insight into the system that you're putting together. Now, first off, we had it on the Evo 4.4s. I wasn't overly impressed with that pairing. It just, once again, sounded all a bit squashed in. Once we went to the 702 S2s though, it really pulled it apart and some of that laid back sort of non-engaging sound become engaging. It was, it, was, it was really nice. And I think this pairing of the Marantz with the Bowers would really suit sort of uh, chilled out folky style music. If you like music with, with lots of space between the instruments, that would be a fantastic combination. 
I then moved on to the Monitor Audio Gold 200s. Once again, plenty of insight into the instruments here, but not quite as engaging as the Bowers and Wilkins, but still very nice indeed just a little tiny bit more laid back. It is a loungy song after all, so maybe that was more of the intention of the artist to have more of that laid back. But nonetheless, I think the Bowers won me over for that particular song. Based on my listening experience, I think the Model 30 is a little bit different to traditional Marantz products. It does have a little bit more of a detail oriented presentation. However, what it has maintained is that beautiful mid-range presence that Marantz is well known for. Now, as far as pairings go, I think the Gold 200 would have to be the, the best all-rounder here and probably suitable for the vast majority of genres, whereas the Bowser Milken 702s were definitely the most engaging. So, you know, pick your battle there. Overall, I think I would choose the Gold 200s but there's something really alluring about the Bowers and Wilkins that I can't quite, you know, let go of. So I'll leave it up to you and the style of music that you like. If you like the space between the instruments, you like detail orientation, yeah, the Bowers has is, is, is got to be it. But if you like me and you listen to lots of different styles of music, maybe the Golds could be the choice for you. So this is the Model 30. As you can see, they've got a whole new design here. I think they've taken a foot in the right direction here and created a much more elegant looking product. With careful considerations such as the balanced line of inputs and selectors, as well as this nice little illuminated light around the edge here. They've also got a bit of texture on this outer face plate here. Overall, I just think this is basically an much more mature product and I think it fits today's consumer much more. Now what remains is this beautiful little Marantz porthole at the front. I think it's iconic to the brand and I'm so glad that they've left it in place. Now onto the specifications, inputs and outputs. Firstly, we all wanna hear about the power and I understand that and you won't be disappointed here. Marantz has 100 watts at eight ohms, doubling down to 200 watts at four ohms. So it's really nice that they actually got that much power on hand. Now, as far as the weight, I believe the unit's 14.7 kilograms, so certainly not a lightweight product. When it comes to the inputs and outputs, this is actually a full analog product, all analog, which is great. And the reason why they've done that, obviously, is because they have this new product called the SA30N, which you've heard me talk about, but all the inputs, digital, streaming, everything is in that product, and by keeping it into a separate box, it allows this one to live on without any changes and just be a pure analog amplifier. Moving on to the front switch and dials. Firstly here is the power button. Nice little rubberized sort of click feel to that. Then we move on to the input. Now this is really well weighted and stepped. So this will actually circle through your inputs which actually get illuminated on the front panel here. Moving on to the phono preamplifier selector. This will actually allow you to select moving magnet and moving coil. Now, if selecting the movement magnet, Marantz don't actually specify what the specifics are here, but one can only assume it's 47,100. Moving on to the moving coil, it does allow you to select low, mid, or high. Now, if you've got a different moving coil cartridge, chances are this amplifier will be able to cater for it. With the low setting going to 33, the mid 100, and the high being 390, so certainly plenty of versatility there. Something common in Marantz products is tone controls, and there's certainly no exception here. We have the bass dial along with the treble, and then lastly, balance. The last dial here is probably the most important one. That's your party dial, the volume knob. And to the very far is the headphone jack with the onboard dedicated headphone amplifier. Now around the back we have the inputs and outputs. Firstly is the CD input. You'll notice that these particular RCA inputs are actually of a higher quality than the others. One can only imagine that is to take full advantage of the SACD30M. Moving on, we have a tuner input along with one, two, three analog inputs. Now next to that is a fixed line level output recorder out. And then we have a set of pre-outs. This is perfect for setting up a set of 
uh, dual subwoofers or maybe an external power amplifier. Lastly here we have the power amp direct in, perfect for home theater bypass use. Now down the bottom is that all important phono preamplifier input. We have the two RCAs here, you'll notice that they're high quality just like the CD along with quite a nice lug for the ground. Here we have the speaker binding post. You'll notice that these are of a high quality and allow you to hook up multiple ways. Further across here, we have the remote in and out. This allows you to use other Marantz products and trigger the amplifier on or off or the SACD30N on or off. And lastly, the power socket. So who is this amplifier for? Well, it fits a bunch of different categories and really it's pretty hard to nail down exactly who it's for. If you're somebody that has a turntable that really doesn't want to run an external phono stage simply because maybe you don't like the look of it or you just don't have the room for it but you still want to maintain a high quality sound, well the Model 30 would be a really good option for you. If you're somebody that likes to display their hi-fi equipment because you want to be proud of it but don't want an ugly old school looking box there, well Model 30 could be for you. Well, let's say it's just someone who wants a really nice amplifier that sounds really good, but still doesn't cost an absolute truckload and gives you a good dollop of high-end audio. Well, the Model 30 could be for you. Overall, I think this fits the bill for a lot of people. And you might be guessing that by the way that I'm speaking now. Now, if you did want more functionality, you certainly could add in the matching SACD30N. With its streaming on board, its dedicated CD player, and its onboard digital to analog converter, your bases are really covered there, and obviously they look beautiful together. We will be doing a future video on the SACD30N, so please make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you'd like to know anything more about the Model 30, please feel free to get in contact with us. You can do that by visiting www.lenc.com.au and hitting the message us button or you can give us a call or simply comment below. Thanks so much for watching, bye for now. Now to throw in even more variables, we actually listened to a bunch of different tracks. The first was, was, was.